Hello, everyone. You are listening to the C Squared podcast with Corey and Curtis. We are here today with James from Lycanthro. We're really excited to have him here. He is an Instagram power user, and I know that that is an area where a lot of people seem to struggle. Um, so I just want to start off first by saying thank you for being here. We're happy to have you. Yeah, yeah. thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be on the show. It's uh, great to finally meet you and to uh, see Curtis again. So uh, I don't know yeah, about that so last part. Me. Is it, is yeah, it really no, ever always, great to see Curtis? It's always great to see Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but anyway um so for those of uh, our listeners that don't know who you are or, or what you're about or know lycanthro why don't you give us like a, a nutshell version of who you guys are what you play what you do just the, the condensed version <laughs> yeah all right well um i'm james delbridge and i'm the lead singer and one of the guitar players for the uh ottawa based power metal band called lycanthro uh, we are signed to Alone Records out of Greece, and uh, we have an EP out called uh, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. We have our first full length out very, very soon. And uh, yeah, we've gotten to um, we've gotten to open for some of the uh, some big names in our genre, like Hammerfall and Unleash the Archers, Battle Beast, and uh, Battle Beast. yeah, that's fantastic. So, oh, you can continue. Uh, Sorry, I was just having a moment there because I love Battle Beast. <laughs> oh, I know. Battle, Battle Beast are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to ask one question, though, James. Just just back up one second. Did you say Unleash the Archers, too? Yeah, we opened for Unleash the Archers. Cool. Cool. Continue. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you said continue. That's pretty much it so far, actually. <laughs> uh, haven't really uh, had really haven't really done much in this pandemic until recently. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. cool yeah, i'm pretty sure that's true for everybody the pandemic really just obliterated everybody's plans yep yeah <laughs> so james just as a as a very first thing so okay so you you've played for, for a bunch of bands you're in ottawa i know you're like 18 years old or something like that <laughs> 22 something like that. 22 oh you're a baby he is a baby that's why i brought uh, it up because he's a baby <laughs> that that's so, the thing that's the thing that everyone makes jokes about is that I find it hilarious that like whenever I do one of these or whenever I'm just talking to someone in general, like at a show or whatever, they'll automatically think I'm like 27, 28. And I'm like, no, I'm only 22. They're like, you're 22 and you've been doing this for this long. I'm like, yeah, exactly. So um, now, now that we've established that you are a baby, uh, <laughs> not, not, not an attitude. So um, you guys have been around since 2017, you said, right? Correct. 2016 2017 and you and you recorded with uh, technically tw right uh technically 2016 we started oh. like what happened was we started um i had an old band that was sort of like my high school band that was called death wish yep. and we were more of like a thrash band and when that band kind of folded because you know high school kids in a band usually usually mm -hmm. isn't the best thing because it's usually personality clashes and all that but I took some of the songs that I wrote from that band and then formed uh, Lycanthro in 2016. Okay, so where, so here's where I was going with this. So, so okay, so you were like 16, 17 years old when you started the band. Um, so how did you kind of like find your other fellow metalhead people to uh, get this going with you when you're like 16, 17? Um, Kijiji. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Kiji, Kijiji. It was... Um, it was yeah like the, the thing with us is that we're like um a really unfortunate band member wise because i'm like the only one who's been there from the beginning but mm -hmm. um but originally yeah we um kind of kind of just got started with people on i posted ads on kijiji and i found it, people on there who had who liked a lot of the same music as me because the problem with the with the ottawa scene at least is that there isn't a lot of uh, people who are like really heavy into like power metal and old school metal who like, well, the people who like it, but not so many people who play it. So it's, so a lot of the old members were people who were like more heavy, who were into the heavier stuff. And they kind of were just friends of mine who they were, who they came in the band and then ended up leaving because they didn't want to do that thing anymore. But, um, but these current guys that I have now, we're finally like the first lineup that we've had that um, 
we're all on the same page. Like we all like the same music. We all have the same goals. We okay. all put in the same amount of effort in different ways. And um, yeah. So, okay. The rest of the, how, how old are the rest of the members first? Oh man. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the age range in my band is absolutely hilarious. Even though I'm the one that started it, I'm the youngest. I'm 22. Okay. Our yep. guitar player Forrest is 29. Our bass player Stu is 32. And our drummer Panos is uh, 48, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That is amusing. Wow. Um, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to get, throw it over to Corinne in a second, but before I do, how does is does that make it kind of weird aid range wise? I mean, that's like a twenty something year difference between members. Do you guys ever kind of clash or? No, no? I, I actually no. Like th that's the thing that's surprising is that I actually find, at least in my experience, that the more kind of band member clashes happen or when they're around the same age, because huh. there's like, and I've experienced this myself. There's like a lot more there's a lot more drama and there's a lot more like people being like kind of immature and all that. And it's one of those things with, with these guys, the cool thing about it is that there's absolutely no ego. There's no, no trying to one up each other. It's always just, you know, we're all, we're a team. We're all in this together. And I find the age range actually helps a lot because some of the guys in our band have um, like even more experience than me, like our drummer Panos, He's from Greece originally, and he um, was part of a Greek thrash metal band called Memorane like 20 years ago, and cool. they're still around, and he was like their first drummer, and these guys were like semi-successful, like they were decently big in Greece, like they got to, they've toured with like Diamond Head before, nice. and they, um, uh, and this is a fun fact, and if you don't believe me, then you can look on Metal Archives because it says it on there. Uh, Let's hear the, the drummer that actually replaced our drummer in that band after he left and moved to Canada for like one album, I think, was actually Nick Menza from Megadeth. Hmm. What? Did yeah. A, no, 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 no. He replaced who? Uh, Nick Menza replaced our drummer. In the other band? Yeah, in his old band. Yeah. That is interesting. I thought you were yeah. trying to say... Lacanthro for a bit, bit. No, no, no. Well, oh, no, 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 no. no I'm, just, I'm just explaining <laughs> the uh, sort of the like weird how, small world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. And it's um, it's one of those things where he's great to have in the band because he kind of he's like the veteran. You know, he kind of knows how a lot of this stuff works and all that. And being in a band, and he kind of like, even though I've been doing it for a while, he'll like have wisdom to mentor us younger folk. You know, so the children. Um, the wee little uh, ones. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 let Kr I'll let Kring go with the next question. That actually leads really well into the next question because um, sure. we wanted to obviously talk about how you got onto a label, but I find it really interesting that you're from Canada and your label is from Greece, but now it kind of makes more sense that your drummer is also from Greece. So is that kind of how you got onto that label's radar or how did that even happen? Because that's a lot of mileage between the two mm -hmm. of you. Actually, that there's surprisingly that's there's no relation there. Uh, that is surprising. We <laughs> actually signed to the label before he joined the band. Because, <laughs> yeah, because what happened was nice. th this is a really interesting story because um, when we when we released our EP, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, like two years ago, three years ago now, actually, um, it was with the old lineup. It was with our mm -hmm. old lineup, and they, we were all from here. And I was at the time. I was getting ready to actually start pitching it to labels to see if I can get someone to put it out like as a physical release. And I didn't even have to do that because what happened was one day, one morning I got woke up to a message on our Facebook page from some guy named Emmanuel from Greece. And he messaged us saying, hey, my name's Emmanuel. I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce his last name. Um, uh, I run a label out of Thessaloniki, Greece called Alone Records. And we mainly specialize in power metal and old school metal. And I really loved your EP and I want to, I want to sign you guys. And I want to have, I want to release the EP physically through my label. And kind of my first instinct for those kinds of things is usually, hmm, is this going to be a scam maybe? <laughs> but um, what happened was, uh, yeah, but then what happened was, Actually, I just kind of lost my train of thought because Curtis just disappeared. Yeah, we, we just lost Curtis. 
We'll see if he pops back in. Go ahead and just uh, keep well, going. Yeah, I, I'll run I, the I, show if he doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But uh, but yeah, no. So what happened with that was my again my first initial reaction was oh this could be a scam you know because you always hear stories about that kind of thing and uh yeah that's and, like one but, of the biggest red flags is if it's a facebook message yeah it's yeah like, it's true yeah <laughs> but but i remember when i heard your guys podcast the other day i remember curtis brought up something about how a band got signed to century media from a facebook message yes it was uh like it was a big wig in metal that was actually reaching out and they, they thought it was a red flag, a total scam too. It's kind of crazy how these unicorn moments keep happening. Like they kind of happen every once in a while. It's still a red flag, people. Just oh yeah, yeah. That clear. It's like, still a red flag. Oh yeah, no, like if that ever happens, like- Do your homework. There, there, yeah, there is a chance that it's legit, but look into it first. Yes, very and, much. And that's pretty much what I did was I sent, he actually, I kind of, said to him okay well we're interested in doing a physical release and then he sent me this contract and so I said okay well one of our old bandmates his mom was a lawyer actually mm, and and one of my colleagues was actually someone who uh worked at a big label she worked at mm -hmm. uh Dynalone Records at the time mm -hmm. actually and not really a metal label but still a big label and mm -hmm. so I sent it to both of them and I said hey is this legit is this a is this legit or is this a scam and they both said to me they're like not only is this legit but this is like for a band your size this is like the best deal you're gonna get and, and i'm just like what so we signed it and they've been really great to us they're putting out our next album too and um yeah so that's kind of how how that happened was we got signed to them through a facebook message because somehow our EP made its way to, to Greece and before we even met our drummer and yeah that's, so that's I, another I, one of those unicorn moments but we've got Curtis back well yeah, I, there I, 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 hopefully we recorded that whole time I think my internet yep. just went but um we recorded it I took over as the host and but cool. now you're back yeah uh, what where, where were we at he was just giving us the rundown on how he got picked up by the label in Greece. Uh, and it was one of those unicorn moments, a Facebook cool. message that turned out to be legit. We did make oh, it yeah. clear to everybody to do your homework on that one. Yes. But <laughs> yeah, I was, um, I was saying that uh, I was making a reference to the, the episode you guys did when you mentioned uh, a band got signed to Century Media through a Facebook message. And it was obviously this label isn't as big as Century Media, but it was the same kind of thing of, I woke up one morning to a Facebook message of some random niche label in Greece wanting to sign us and then finding out it was not only legit, but like a really good deal, like financially and uh, financially wise, financial wise. <laughs> well, I, I actually had another band have a similar thing happen with a Greek label. It wasn't the same one. So maybe it's just like, that's how Greece, Greek people operate. I don't know. But um, so, okay. So we're talking, we were talking about the, the label. Have we gotten into Instagram yet? No, we just finished nope. up with the label stuff. Can I talk about Instagram or do you want to talk? You can about talk about Instagram all you want. All right. So James is an Instagram superstar. Well, not an Instagram superstar. But he's an Instagram superstar in training, I would say. Um, so can you kind of go over just briefly how you got the idea to do the Instagram lives, which I already know about, but. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well what happened was was i remember like a while back um back last year sometime i got a met there was there was a kind of at the beginning of the pandemic there was sort of a uh a rough patch for the band because we had two members leave at the beginning of the pandemic and we were supposed to like go on tour and all that for the first time and that obviously all didn't happen so there was kind of a six month um there was sort of a six month lull where nothing happened. And it was like a really depressing time for me personally as well. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much took that time and said, okay, I didn't post anything or use any social media for like six months. Cause I was like, okay, you know, I need to focus on getting new members. That's like our first priority. So we mm -hmm. took the time to, to find the right people, obviously. And we did in my, I think. And kind of what got me out of that, that sort of uh, social media void was, uh, was actually Gaia Guarda, because she's one of my absolute best friends in the, in the scene. 
Uh, my band, we've played with her band, Uriel, before. We played their album release show last year with them mm-hmm. in Montreal. And I had a, I did a call with her one time because I was at, we, we wrote a new song and I wanted her to like play like some harp on it or something. So I said, hey, we have this, I have this song. Uh, there's harp in it. Do you want to do it? And she said, yeah. And in this video call, she mentioned to me, I explained to her, I'm like, oh, I haven't really been using social media very much. And she says, well, I'm, I'm starting to do a, um, an Instagram live series where I just chat with uh, friends of mine and ask them about their projects and their sort of any stories or philosophies on the music industry. Mm-hmm. And she's like, would you want to come on? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And doing that was kind of what got me out of that sort of void because yep. it was so fun that I thought I started reaching out to people like her and Curtis and and uh, and Andy Dowling as well, sort mm-hmm. of to like kind of get back on the social media horse, as it were. And I kind of thought, and I asked Gaia, I said, "Hey, um, could I <laughs> could I steal your idea to do the Instagram live thing?" And she said, "Yeah, absolutely." And I kind of figured that it would be unique enough to us because even though a few people like her and um a few people like her and also inferno doll were doing similar things we're a different enough genre that i kind of figured that we would get like different guests on it like kind of different people than they were getting yep and people who are more kind of relevant to our genre and yeah and i started doing that and uh and much to my surprise i was able to get like a lot of semi big names on it which i was uh which i was really shocked about but um one thing that i learned was um even if someone's like a big name unless your name is like bruce dickinson or something Mm -hmm. most musicians won't turn down an interview or a chat or a talk show or any you know so that's kind of how that came about so Okay, so it came from Guy. I gave Guy that idea. I just want to point out. I'm going to yeah, and I found that out later. <laughs> yeah, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to point out. I'm going to toot my own horn on that one. But um, yeah, now Guy doesn't do them as much anymore, which is kind of surprising. But so with you, you seem to be kind of focusing on more of the, how do I put this? More of the metal, power metal type people plus industry people. Um, so how do you kind of like, figure out who you want to ask to come on because you had um that singer from that band that's really well known i forget her name that was on adrian cowan that's right you had her on seven spires and she's also in avantasia yeah 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 so you had her on and then you've had uh but then you've also had pr people like me and john on uh you've had matt on yeah figure out who the guests are going to be um well what happened was was at first like for the first two or three weeks I kind of just did it with people I knew and I kind of kind of the factors that I kind of take into account of people who I would want on the show and who I pick is not only people who I'm friends with but also like people who I know have a decent following that we can both introduce each other to each other's followers Mm -hmm. and and then also there's also a few people who I've had on the show or I'm, and I'm having on the show that I've actually never met before in person, but I just have them because I like what they're doing, like musically. Like, even though we kind of mainly focus on like the heavy metal, power metal sort of thing, I've had some guests from different other different subgenres. Like I had um, the other day, the most recent one I did was with Sam Landa, who's the drummer from Conquer Divide which they're not power metal at all, but yeah. she's an old friend. She's an old friend of mine. And I figured she'd be a really interesting person to have on the show. And she has all these stories of like touring with Nervosa and all these nice. opportunities that she's, she's had. So I kind of boil it down to usually either if it's someone who I know and like, who has a good fat following. And I think I can get some interesting stories and advice and insight out of, um, or two, it's a musician that I like really look up to that I want to kind of pick their brain. Like, as I said, Adrian was definitely like the big one for, for that because I, I knew her from before. The, I was able to get her on the show because I knew her from before because we'd opened for them a few times. Oh. And yeah. Okay. We, okay. we play whenever Seven Spires comes here, we usually play with them. Okay. And um, her and I had Noah Grumman from Scardust, who's from Israel, which that okay. was a, uh, hilarious stream because i had to get up at i had to do the stream at like 10 a.m 
and that was like almost the evening for them over there yeah and mm -hmm. um yeah so it's like so yeah so it's friends of mine who i know i have like a good following and we can like know i can have a good interesting conversation with that the viewers will enjoy and appreciate then there's obviously like people who i look up to people who i'm a fan of that i want to be able to pick their brain and stuff like that and then the third one is some bands or artists that are not necessarily big but um i really like their music and even if i'm never even if they're a smaller band i want to give them a bit more of a a platform too like uh i had my friend's band from called Malak uh malakota lucas from malakota on a little while ago yep. and i'm having i had like juliet ruin from uh, edmonton and yeah and a lot of these bands don't necessarily have as much um as much clout as like let's say seven spires do or whatever but yep. they but they're people who i who i like what they do and i want to learn more about them and get to know them better and uh and yeah okay so what would you okay so like let's say that uh if, if you were talking to me and corinne right now which you are so like if we wanted to book people for for our show like how, how would you tell us to go about doing it um I'm going to switch the question around and, and, and get your opinion on this. Uh, well, a lot, a lot of times I find that um, kind of like explaining it really well helps. Like if it's someone who I don't know, I'll usually try and um, usually I try and do a bit of like homework on the person just to see if there's certain ways they like to be contacted or certain things that you should or shouldn't say, you know, Mm -hmm. And usually I'll just shoot them a message on Facebook or Instagram and say, Hey, um, usually I'll try and tie into, if it's someone who I've met personally before, even if it was very brief, I'll usually try and tie that into when I ask them, like, for example, we just confirmed, um, Alex Nasla from Witherfall is coming on the show soon. And I'm a huge fan of theirs. And I met them at Prague power, uh, back in 2019. So I kind of just said, Hey man, I don't know if you remember me, but, um, it's James. We hung out at your merch booth at Prague power. Um, I wanted to message you cause I wanted to ask you something and then they'll get back to me. They're like, Oh, we, Oh, what's up. And I'll be like, well, I do this talk show on Instagram where we talk about, um, sort of like whatever new releases that you're promoting or your kind of recording or songwriting, uh, process or, produ or production or, or even stuff like PR, how you promote yourself, blah, blah, blah. Uh, would you be interested? And more often than not, that's, that's enough for people, I find. Because as I said before, I actually learned this from, from Matt Bacon. Was he said that um, a lot of times, if you want to um, work with someone or get to know someone, most musicians will never turn down an, inter an interview. Yep. And, and again, as, as I said, unless their name's like Bruce Dickinson and they're, you know, freaking huge then most musicians uh, of a certain level will almost always take an interview in like any shape or way shape or form so that's kind of how yeah. i go about it just for the record on, on this show on this show we, we only refer to corinne not to matt because that's the old dumb and dumb mm -hmm. show he, he, he's now known as voldemort he he who shall not be named oh i'm sorry <laughs> no i'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we're just boost, joking boost, boost, boost corinne's ego um Corinne, you want to follow up before I go on? Um, that was a lot of information. And <laughs> I think it's going to be really, really helpful for people, though, uh, to understand that, I mean, especially people just getting started in podcasts and everything, that it's okay to actually reach out to people because yeah. we're all, we all want to help and we're all willing to work with you. Um, but I, I guess it does kind of lead me into my next, well, maybe the next question is, is Instagram your favorite of all of the platforms or is that the one that you're seeing the most success or do you see different types of success on different platforms? Um, it, it is now because mm -hmm. Instagram, it's funny you say that because Instagram was something because back with, as I said, with my, the old lineup, um, I never used to do the Instagram. I never, mm -hmm. um, I, I used to focus on just the Facebook actually. And our old guitar player used to do the Instagram. But when he left the band, he said, okay, here's the Instagram account. And I never even touched Instagram before. And I had to learn it to be able to do this. And I've actually found in 
the short time that I've been doing it that I find it's way more enjoyable and way um, better for reach and networking than Facebook is because I used to, I used to use Facebook because again, I used to use Facebook for everything and Mm -hmm. for messaging, for, for networking, all that stuff. And, but when I got Instagram, I kind of realized like, Hey, this is exactly the same, just a lot easier because I find on Facebook nowadays because of, because of, you know, all the stuff going on in the world at the moment, music isn't really, or anything creative isn't really at the forefront in Facebook anymore. And it's I find that a lot of cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. And um, I found that a lot of people don't really ever even go on there much anymore. Like I, I remember there's been many times where I've sent a message to someone on Facebook and they won't even see it. Yep. Then I'll send that same person's message on Instagram and they'll see it like right away and respond right away. Mm-hmm. And it's just because I find that as a social media, it's way more streamlined and way easier to to use and as as you said Corey with the um how f- Facebook is a bit of a bit of a cesspool now uh Instagram the thing I really appreciate about it is that it'll only show you things that you like if you're a metalhead it'll only show you metal stuff or if you're into fashion it'll only show you fashion stuff you know uh-huh. and um and I find that's an easier way to streamline and to find um people that you want to talk to that you want to work with and as I said, it's been, um, it's been really surprising to me. And as you were saying with the, I have been getting a big level of success in terms of uh, gaining followers from, from doing these streams and posting on there more because our, in terms of our Facebook followers, our Facebook followers has been at like a stalemate for like a year. Like no one ever goes on our, we, we've been stuck at like almost 2000 followers on Facebook for like a year and it's sucked. But on Instagram, uh, with a lot of the effort I've been putting into it and a lot of the things I've been posting, people seem to like it more. So they've been, we've been following ever since I started the using the page, we've gone up like more followers in like six months than like almost like two years on the Facebook. And that's why I kind of been focusing on it more now because I find that people people there are there for the music and they're there for the content while on Facebook I find it's as I said it's because a lot of with the stuff going on in the world right now a lot of us musicians our stuff gets buried and not a lot of people see it no matter how no matter how good the content is and I see this with a bunch of other bands I've even seen this with big bands that no matter how good the content is there just won't there just isn't any reach you won't a lot of people won't see it like I I remember the seeing the algorithm has just been it's been throttled entirely when it yeah. comes to music on Facebook yeah and it's it's been it's really sad because Facebook mm-hmm. used to be used to be really good because mm-hmm. I remember when when back when we were playing shows constantly and I was posting constantly on there we used to get a gigantic reach and we used to get like between between 30 like 30 on a bad day and maybe like up to 100 on a good day likes per post but now Mm -hmm. after there was that like kind of six month dry spell where I didn't post on social media um I'd be it'd be lucky if our posts reaches like 100 people and Mm -hmm. I'm just like what what the hell what and then I saw oh this isn't just us all these other bands that I know the same things happen you'll go to a band that has like 12k followers you'll look on their post and only has like 20 likes and i'm like and i'm just so it it sucks and i find on instagram it's been way more successful for us in terms of reaching out to people and um and having people see our stuff and and as i said before with uh with networking because and tying back into the live stream show is that there's lots of people who i reached out to on instagram who again, who are quote unquote in bigger, more successful, more well-known bands. And I remember finding that if you message their Facebook page, they almost, almost, they almost always won't see it. But when you message their Instagram, a lot of times, like to my shock, they'll get back to you like almost right away. So on all those fronts, I find that it's been a lot more successful for us. Well, I think the spam filter is also less on Instagram. Isn't that right, Corey? You're the social media person. Yeah, it is. And just overall, if it's a page rather than a personal profile, Facebook has just 
obliterated any kind of reach that most people could see. I mean, I manage some big accounts for social media, lots of followers. And even us, it's like, there. if it's not a Corey Taylor post, yeah. it's not going to be seen. Yeah, is basically because, what it is because we all know that Corey taylor's word is law mm-hmm. <laughs> i really want to know what he thinks about this <laughs> yes I, I do want to point something out there every person i've ever talked to from metal injection or metal sucks all says that they hate talking about Corey taylor i just want to we point all that. do <laughs> every one of us everybody fucking hates it but it's- um it's uh, almost a meme now because every mm-hmm. time i see like a comment section on blabbermouth or metal injection and they're posting like a story it's always there will always be about at least like 10 or 20 comments going have you asked what Corey taylor thinks about yep. this yep. yeah i can't believe that's still a thing to be honest it is one of my pet peeves of the social media world so just disclaimer people please don't do that <laughs> it's not funny anymore <laughs> I, 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 have, I have a i have a question though since we're on the subject do either of you guys actually listen to slipknot i mean i not at all I actually really like Slipknot. I'm not even going to deny but, that fact. But, I grew up on them, though. They were but, one of my gateway bands, so... But you actively listen to them that much that it warrants, like, the amount of attention that he gets? I, like, I, I, no, I don't actively listen to him that much yeah. anymore. When I was younger, I did. Fair. But, yeah. yeah, now I'm more into extreme yeah. stuff, you know, like yeah. Flesh God Apocalypse and whatnot. Yeah. So they're a little tame for me now <laughs> yeah and yeah uh, and slipknot i thought was like there's a couple of songs i like from them back in the day one mm-hmm. one like but at the same time yeah like i again i was never really into that style of metal to begin with so yeah like i like like i liked psychosocial like when it came out and wait and That's bleed like like the like kind of the, the big songs but other than that like uh it's never really was my thing personally so Moving along from the Slipknot thing, since we've got about 10 more minutes left. So um, a couple more things I want to go over here is uh, number one. So back to back to back to your social media type thing. Do you use TikTok at all? Uh, no, I no, okay. I don't actually. OK, can, can you kind of is that is there like a reason behind that? Because you're like the perfect age demographic to be using that, <laughs> if you're not using it. So I'm kind of curious about this. Um, well, I kind of found because I think I kind of looked at it from like a genre perspective, because I find that certain bands do better on TikTok than others in terms of genre. Like if you're, I find if you're playing in like a metal core band, that's something that younger people are more likely to listen to and therefore you'll do better. Like I said, bands like Conquer Divide and all that stuff, they would do really well on TikTok. Well, a band like us, which we play power metal, which isn't really a genre that people my age typically listen to, Not I kind of find that it wouldn't, I kind of find that that kind of thing just wouldn't do well on there. And I find that on Instagram, there's a lot more people who are into, it's such a wider community of people who are into certain genres. Like if you go under hashtag power metal on Instagram, there's so many people. So I kind of yeah. figured that it isn't really the right platform for our kind of music. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean it's power metal is one of those weird genres where it's like it seems like it's like older people that are into it but i mean it makes like you can make so much money doing power metal over virtually any other fucking genre it's just mind-blowing especially I in europe power metal. yeah same here but i mean like it's mm-hmm. all people that are over 30 right so generally well and i also around. grew up on the you know, like Judas Priest and all that stuff. So yeah. the transition yeah. into liking modern power metal, it makes sense because it's nostalgic yeah. for me. So yeah. So so how I wanted to go go about about this next question was so James, how did how did someone who's twenty three get into this, you know, older person genre? Anyways, that's this is kind of my twenty two. He's a baby. <laughs> baby, baby at twenty two. Go because okay. Just as an explainer here, just want to just want to explain something. I want to ask Corey this too first before beforehand, beforehand. So I mean, I personally didn't get into power metal until I was probably thirty, probably around Corey's age, thirty two, because I'm forty four right now, and I kind of was of the generation like we like it was grunge when I was a teenager. So you know, all the power metal stuff I kind of skipped somehow right so i didn't get into iron me until i was like 32 and i actually heard them for like the first time so Corey, before i before i ask this question how you you got into power metal initially is what you're saying me 
Yeah. Uh, my favorite band when I was a kid was Judas Priest, and I loved Iron Maiden. And okay. so the the transition makes sense. I did. I got into like the power metal bands that we, we're probably all thinking of now, probably around the same ta- same age as James, so late teens, early twenties. But you started off with with power metal though, with Judas Priest slash Iron Maiden. That was your first mm-hmm. before anything else. Okay. Interesting, because I, I I skipped. Um, okay, so James, how did you do it then? Um, well, the the whole thing, I think it it's very similar to how Corey got into it. It just came, the transition made sense because obviously, like, even though this band isn't power metal, they're like epic enough that they can definitely be seen as like an influence. My first band I really really got into was Queen when I was real oh. when I was like seven. Who five doesn't or six. love Queen? I, I know. Don't like, I don't like Queen. What? I, don't I like quit it. this podcast. Yeah, I'm out. Bye. <laughs> I, 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 I like a couple of songs, but I don't get it. But anyways, go ahead. But yeah, no, but Queen had had a lot of the stuff that were kind of the precursors to that, like the big harmonies and the big choruses and all that. And, and all the theatrics and everything. Yeah. And my uncle, who's my whole dad, my whole side of my dad's family is British. And my mm-hmm. uncle was a metalhead back in the 70s. He saw any big 70s metal band, you name it, he's seen it. Like, he saw Black Sabbath when they were in their prime. He saw Rainbow. He saw uh, Dio, all those bands. And he was the one who got me into metal. And he showed me the the four bands I remember he mainly showed me at first were Priest, UFO, Thin Lizzy, and um, Rainbow. It was those Mm -hmm. four. And Priest is my favorite, obviously. They're still, next to Triumph, they're my favorite band. Mm -hmm. And... um, yeah, and as I said, kind of the um, transition came naturally. Like, there was a little bit of a period when I was in high school where I was, at, like, a thrash kid. Mm-hmm. Like, I still love, like, Megadeth and Overkill and stuff like that. And that's, like, all I listened to for, like, maybe when I was in middle school. And like, me. Step- and then, but then I discovered, uh, it's, like, Halloween. Halloween, I remember I discovered them through a weird way because my dad made a joke one day saying, hey, James, ever heard of the band Halloween? And I'm like, No. He goes, oh, I had one of their cassettes back in the day just as a blind buy, but I didn't like it, so I threw it out. And I thought, hmm, so I looked it up and I found the, the video for Halloween by Halloween. Yep. And then I immediately went to my dad and said, dad, why did you throw that out? That's amazing. That's <laughs> and, amazing. And that's kind of how that happened was it was the seamless transition from the old school bands like Priest and UFO and Maiden and all that into uh, power metal. Mm-hmm. interesting so just i know we don't have much time up but are you kind so are you kind of like you're kind of positioning yourself towards that audience slash trad metal correct yeah because because as a band we're not really we're not power metal in the traditional sense we're still trying yeah. to have a little bit of like heaviness to us like yeah. more people have compared us more to like a jag panzer than uh, yeah. rhapsody you know yeah Which, yeah. Can... yeah so it's like we still try and cater to like the power metal fans, the kind of underground old school metal fans, stuff like that. Cool. Um, do you want to follow up, Corey, before I ask a final question? No, go ahead. You're good cool. to go. So, um, so you, you've watched our podcast slash YouTube series uh, more than once, correct? Mm-hmm. So what would, you, what would you give us for advice on uh, how, we, how we should be doing this podcast better, better out of curiosity? Ooh. Um... That's not the final question, but I'm just asking, curious. Hmm. Curtis needs to be wearing a ton of glitter during the show, right? No, that that no, would make it better? No, okay. I, no. I think, no, I honestly think that if he wore one of those Groucho Marx glasses with the nose, I think that would make it a lot better, actually. So, all, but in serious, <laughs> what, what, what could we improve? Like, like, like for, for both of us, what, what could we improve as, as a listener of the podcast? Um, or what do you not like, or what do you like? Honestly, I think like, I don't know, because I, I really like the format that you guys are doing because you guys gear it more towards like whoever's on and you kind of gear the questions basically like to their strengths and all that, like sure. with me doing like the Instagram thing and all that. So I don't actually know what I really like it. You like, hear that? Uh, we're perfect, Curtis. We're perfect. We are I... flawless. So, okay. So, so, uh, okay. So what, what would you say would be, let me re- reframe the question before we go on the last one. So what, if, if you could have us do anything on the podcast or have, uh, would it be more solo or would it be with guests all the time? I guess is what I want, I want to know. Oh, um, I think a good mixture of 50, 50, I think would be best because I think is the one, one of the episodes I really liked from you guys was the, uh, 
the PR red flags thing, which is yeah. something that you don't yeah. necessarily need a guest for because you two are very, very, you're like experts in that already. So mm -hmm. I find that like a lot of those more like informative ones, like it's great to have guests and get like people's uh, uh, like take on things. Yep. And, and I love some of the guests you've gotten, like, as I said, like Michael Sweet and Trevor from Black Dahlia and all that, some really great guests that I was just like, holy shit, you know, they got them. Mm -hmm. And, and those are Corey, popular. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead, James. Well, yeah, no, but I think that I guess more informative stuff would be, but just between you two would be uh, really helpful because some of the things you brought up in that episode were really, really uh really good information and i feel like if we had more of that then people would get a really good perspective of like it's like okay here we we have and people will will trust you guys as well because we're like okay we have Corey who writes for metal injection one of the biggest metal websites in the world and we have curtis who is a great pr guy who works for who like he's done PR for a ton of bands he did like Lindsay Schoolcraft and all that so people I, I find that like you guys have enough qualifications as it is that people will trust your word easily like I do so <laughs> big mistake no I'm Cor kidding <laughs> Cor Corey's like whoa but anyways okay so uh did you want to follow up Corey before I ask the final final question for real no go ahead You're good okay to go. so James, what do you want to talk about as a final thing, like for to plug rather? Like, what do you want to plug? Because you don't have a new album out yet. So what does James plug? Perfect. Um, I actually made a post about this today. Uh, we are, today's Bandcamp Friday, obviously. Yep. Yep. Um, we're going to, uh, we actually got on a, uh, we're on a tribute album for Running Wild, the, the European, the German band. Uh, yep. It's out on Burning Sun Records. Uh, we recorded a cover of their song Port Royal. Yeah, it's on there, and I'm trying to help the 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 label sell out all the copies. So anybody here listening who likes power metal, who likes Running Wild, there's some really great bands on this compilation. So we all put our heart and soul into this and try to give give these these legendary songs justice. So go check that out. And we will have an announcement on our for our new album very, very soon. We're just waiting on a release date from our label because, you know, pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, no, for now, I guess my main plug would be uh, go and check out the Wild Privateers Underground uh, Running Wild tribute out on Burning Sun Records. It's uh, they've sold a decent amount already. Uh, we want we're trying to sell it out. So if you're a fan of that kind of thing, then go check that out. Cool. Okay. Don't forget to link me to that later. Cause otherwise I'm going to forget to put that in the show notes. Okay. Sweet. Cool. Yeah, I'll, send, I'll send it. I'll send it to you for sure. Cool. Okay. That's all we got. So uh, party on Corey. Party on Curtis. Party on James. Awesome. Thanks very much for having me guys. Yeah. Yeah.